Hi, I'm Ted Mackle. I'm the author of HomeBuyersBlog.com, uh, Simi Valley's premier real estate information blog and resource. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about the good faith estimate, or known as the GFE. And I think the uh, lingo around the industry, uh, the lending industry now, as they call it, the uh, GFE 210, um, 2010, uh, for you know this new form that has now been uh, put into the practice, uh, I think it was middle of January this year. Um, it was either the very first year or middle of January. But anyway, if you're going to borrow money to purchase a house, um, you're going to get one of these forms. And I'm going to point out the good parts and the bad parts. And um, part of this is really good for consumers. But another part of this uh, form is an absolute grease fire. And uh, it does exactly opposite of the whole purpose. The form was designed to make your costs clear and to hold people accountable. Um, they hit it on the accountability part, but making the costs clear, uh, <laughs> really, when we get into page two, you're going to see the problems that we have. Anyway, looking closer at this form, um, under section A on uh, page one, the summary of your loan really nails down um, and creates the accountability as to uh, your interest rate, your terms, uh, the cost of your loan. And the thing that we would run into, and I'll give a quick example, is you know, buyer will be out there working with a real estate agent. Um, they'll get into escrow and they'll have been referred to several very high quality people in the industry and they'll come into escrow and say, you know, my Uncle Bob's fraternity brother uh, called and said he can get me the same loan uh, 30 years fixed at 4% interest and no points and in fact I don't even have to pay for an appraisal and uh, you know I can't beat that anywhere else uh, and so what happens is is that that bait and switch technique was being used because these lenders would get the clients in and by the time they get them to fill out the uh, application for the loan run the credit and get them into the process the borrowers were so overwhelmed with the whole process of buying the home that they wouldn't leave and switch and switch to another lender and then by the time uh, it came to loan doc signing they are now ha they're in a higher interest rate uh, there's loan costs that uh, now all of a sudden are there that weren't supposed to be there and on and on and on so this uh, summary of loan information and the origination charges uh, which show up under the section A really nail down and keep the bait and switchers from uh, wreaking havoc in the industry like they did for so many years. Um, again, in this area, I know some really, really high quality people um, that are in the loan business. Uh, they definitely, uh, I think this part of the form helps them in the sense that now they won't uh, lose clients to uh, these people who are doing weird things. Page two, you know, like I said early, this is this is the grease fire, um, and we'll kind of go over it. Again, the form is supposed to make the costs clearer to the borrower. This does everything but when we get into here, and it starts off just right from the very first part before uh, section three here. It says your charges for all other settlement services. If you're a borrower, that word your is saying you. That 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 in the English language that says to the person reading the form, hey, these are my costs. This could this is the furthest thing from the truth. Because what they do in here is they lump all the costs of the buyer and the seller into this form here. And so the buyer has absolutely no idea which ones belong to the buyer. All they can see is what happens for the whole transaction. If we look real quickly at section 4 here, this is the escrow fee and the lender's title insurance policy fee uh, lumped into one. And in my market area in Southern California, this title fee is, or this escrow fee, the services, is split equally between the seller and the buyer. The buyer pays for the lender's title insurance policy, but if this is one lump sum here in the column, you don't know what your true cost is. Same thing with Section 5 here. 
this traditionally in my market area is a seller cost not a buyer cost um, and transfer taxes under eight is the same thing traditionally here these documentary transfer taxes are a seller cost not a buyer cost so when my phone rings at 11 o'clock at night with my buyer having an absolute coronary because the fees down here in B are astronomical I don't blame them this is ridiculous this doesn't do anything but cause problems what has to happen at this point if or if you've been in this particular situation is you got to get a statement from escrow uh, and they'll give you a buyer borrower statement out of escrow and it looks here's a transaction I just completed and I won't show you the name and, and the people or the address but you can get a really good idea here as to a proper way to look at what your costs are going to be this is a line item line by line by line what you're going to expect to pay on this uh, almost three hundred thousand dollar purchase all the fees the prorations um, and where they go and and um, that section B in the form doesn't do any of that and you can see there's a huge difference between these two um, in making this clear to the borrower so you know like I said I there's things I like you get onto page three and it really nails down the things that cannot increase the, that are put on this forms the things that can increase up to ten percent um, the things that can change rapidly really the basic idea is is that um, any services that are um, referred to you or identified by us to you the, if you decide to use them they cannot change more than 10 percent from the time it's quoted to when uh, it comes to settlement uh, the charges that can change are things that you pick on your own and then the things that cannot change at all are you know what's basically in section A um, and the transfer taxes which is a government set rate so that those don't change either and then there's a couple of nice little worksheet tables down here at the bottom that you can compare and contrast and really get a good idea so page three and page one um, are really uh, a good part of the form the government actually gets something done pretty decently but what happens is as we get back into that section B where it says your charges and all other settlements and this is where the grease fire starts so um, if you got comments or questions please post them up here love to hear from you um, I'll try to get uh, one of my friends from the lending industry come in and talk about what happens when these things change um, you know the time frames the penalties to the lenders and escrow if we've got problems there and uh, shed a little bit of light on that end because that's not where I specify or you know that's not my expertise on the form but I get enough calls on this page too that I thought I'd bring this out for everyone to see and again thanks for uh, tuning in